Now, I've been teaching on the subject of prayer, but what was laid upon my heart tonight was a little bit of a different direction. And so let's open our Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 20, where Paul the Apostle is speaking to actually uh, those who are in authority. And he's actually getting ready to depart. Uh, he's headed to Rome, where eventually they'll take his head for the gospel's sake. And he knew this. So what he says here is of extreme importance in verse 26. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. <clears throat> Notice verse 27, and we're looking in the book of Acts. And, and this is a message really to the ministers of the gospel, but to us as believers. Take, it says, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Why would Paul say that? Because in his day and age, there were ministers who were not preaching all the counsel of God. And the reason why they weren't preaching all the counsel of God is because it gets you killed. <laughs> it gets you in trouble. Uh, you'd make a lot of enemies. And he says to those he's speaking to in verse 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers, notice, to feed the church of God. Feed the church of God. Remember, that's the very last thing that Jesus said to Peter. Uh, after the resurrection, he said, Peter, do you love me? And he says, Lord, you know I love you. He said, okay, feed my sheep. And then he asked him the second time, Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know I love you. And then he said, feed my lambs. And the third time he said, Peter, do you love me? He said, yea, Lord. Now he's upset. You know I love you. He said, feed my sheep. Now, the amazing thing is the first two times Jesus said, do you love me? He used the Greek word agape. Do you agape me? Do you agape me? And Peter answered, Lord, you know I phileo you. That means friend. You're my closest friend. The third time, Jesus finally said, Peter, do you phileo me? And what's amazing about God is you'll find out that God will work with us where we're at spiritually. I said last Sunday night, I made a statement. I said our whole, our whole purpose, our whole mission, every one of us individually, uh, is to become as much like Jesus as we can in this world. Uh, salvation, being born again, is just the first step of process. Is like a woman conceiving from her husband. Yeah, you have a fertilized egg, and, and it is human. But now there's a growth period, and then there's a birthing. So that's amazing because Pete, uh, uh, Paul said, and th this is way more mysterious than a lot of people understand, um, matter of fact, Paul said, I, I would have fed you spiritual things, but I can't because you're carnal. He said, because where there's envy and strife, uh, there's carnality. That means naturally minded thinking. Do you know you can be born again and even a baptized in the Holy Ghost person and be carnal? That means you're carnally thinking. You're, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is Life and peace, to be spiritually, to see, to be spiritually minded is to see it as God sees it. Now, actually, tonight's message, it's called a recipe for disaster. A recipe for disaster. You understand what I'm saying in just a moment. But Paul said, I, I, uh, uh, Paul is said, I declared unto you the whole counsel of God. And... Paul was a man who knew God, and yet he said, I have not yet apprehended, have apprehended all that for which I've been apprehended for. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press, I press toward the mark. So a woman can be pregnant, but then there is a birthing process. And Paul said this about the Galatians. He says, I travail in birth again into Christ be outwardly expressed in you. Uh, the Galatian church had come to the place of spirituality, but when 
doctrines of men, the false brethren that came down from James, from Jerusalem, came in, according to Galatians chapter 2, deceived the people, deceived the brethren, and they fell into circumcision, feast days, holy days, new moon days, Sabbath days. Now, it kind of frightens me. There's a big movement going on in the church world today of trying to take people into the, the Old Testament feast days, holy days, Sabbath days. Now, there is truth in those days. I'm not denying that there's truth in teaching in that particular, those celebrations of those days. But we don't follow those days. We don't keep those days. Uh, we don't exalt those days. We exalt Jesus Christ. What a lot of people don't really understand is Christ is our Sabbath. He is our all in all. He is our everything. And so Paul said, I preached unto the whole counsel of God. Now, he also made another statement in Galatians. He said, for if we are an angel, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we preached, let him be accursed. He said, as I said before, so say it now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which we preached unto you, let him be cursed. Now, that's pretty strong words. I mean, for Paul basically to say, let people who are preaching another gospel. Now, he said it, it, it's the gospel of Christ, but it's another gospel. What does that mean? That means they have perverted the gospel. Uh, and the reason why I called this a recipe uh, of, of destruction is because of the fact that let's just look at something in the natural for a moment. Because Christ always used the natural to illustrate the spiritual. That's why he gave parables. Whether he gave the parable of the lost coin or the lost sheep, or he gave the parable of the master giving the pounds to his servants, and there's many parables, or the sower sowing the seed. Many parables he tried, was taking the natural to relate to the spiritual. So I'm going to take the natural related to the spiritual. So I have a, a box of... Uh, of uh, uh, flapjack and waffle mix in my hand here. This, and there's all kinds of ingredients in this box. And also on the back, there's ingredients that they tell you that you must mix with this ingredients in order to get the product that they're advertising. Now, this isn't a natural. So, here I've got, and let's say I, I, I really want to have some waffles or pancakes. And so I get up one morning and I look at the back of my waffle box, my pancake box. And I look in the back and I say, okay, in order to make the kind of pancakes or the waffles I'm looking for, I'm going to have to add uh, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. I say, oh, I like brown sugar. Let me highlight that. So I'll highlight that. Oh, I've got to put an egg. Okay, I like eggs. I'll highlight that. I've got to put a quarter cup of butter. Soft. Oh, I like butter. Uh, okay, I'm supposed to put uh, some applesauce. No, I don't like applesauce that much. Um, I'm supposed to put some uh, nutmeg. No, I don't like nutmeg that much. So what I do is I take the ingredients that I like, that I enjoy, and I put it in a bowl, and I dump not the prescribed amount of pancake mix, but what I think, what I feel is going to work. Mix it all up, put it in the oven, and it tells me now directly how hot the oven's supposed to be. 350 degrees at such and such, or the stove. I say, oh, that's too hot, or that's... Not usually too cold, but too hot. I, don't, I ain't going to use 350. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to do it at 200. And I slap it in the oven, and it tells me it's got to cook so long, but I come much earlier, pull it out, flop it on my plate, and go to eat, and it's the worst thing I ever ate. Now, at that point, now I know this sounds stupid, I could very get confused, Depressed, upset, maybe angry, maybe bitter. Or maybe I can just make myself eat the conglomeration I just made. And then I'm, I'll blame the makers of Kodiak Cakes. I'll blame them. Maybe I'll go to their website and leave some bad reports of their product. But how many know that it was not 
the product, it was me. It was me. I, 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 my results were disastrous. I, I'm telling you, that is what's going on with the gospel right now. People are taking their Bibles, and I'm not against the wonderful promises of God, and I do it, but they'll take their Bible, and they're going to highlight the parts they like. They're going to highlight what they agree with. And then they ignore all of the conditions, all of the commandments, all of the responsibilities, and when they don't get the results that the Bible promises, they can do a number of things. They could teach a doctrine that says, well, God doesn't heal anymore. God doesn't answer prayer anymore. God doesn't do miracles anymore. How many know that's a lie? It's a lie. Or God really didn't mean what he said. Or, you know what, I know the Bible says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, but, but, but we're misunderstanding this. We're not rightly discerning the word, they could say. Uh, you'll discover right now that the body of Christ is full, full to overflowing of a lot of false teaching. Well, how could, you know, if you look at the church in the book of Acts, and you see what happened, what transpired, what took place, and, and I discovered that we are so far from the book of Acts that God, something's wrong. And people go, God, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? When really, you don't need to be very brilliant to know what's wrong. We're not following the instructions. I, I really do. I believe the Bible, and I'm not talking about formulas. I'm talking about dynamic spiritual principles. This book is a book of life. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. Who's the simple? That's you and me. It gives us divine wisdom, gives us insight. Yeah, Solomon, I think, is a perfect example. God gave him a divine download of amazing wisdom. Read the book of Proverbs. But as you read the book of Ecclesiastes, and then you look in the book of Kings, and you see the lifestyle of Solomon, you say something's not adding up. I mean, 2 plus 2 plus 2 should equal 6, but it's equaling 4 or 3. Solomon, what's wrong? How many of you know that God gave him a divine download, but he did not do according to what he got from God? It says, uh, you know, uh, it says that if we're going to teach it, we ought to do it. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving who? yourselves. So I, I know, and, 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 and actually I'm glad that this, it's this way. If I'm not getting what the Bible says I should have, I, I know that it's not God. But there's something going on in me that is not right. Something's lacking in my life. Lacking in my life. Something, something's not right in my life. Now, don't mess that to me. It, it could be that I'm not in open rebellion to God, but maybe I'm ignorant. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I'm ignorant of God's will. I'm ignorant of how God does it, how God says it, how God causes it to come to pass. Now, Christ is a perfect example, and I'll just use this box of Kodiak cakes, of somebody who took the ingredients, followed the instructions exactly right, didn't add, didn't take away, does it exactly right, you sit down at the breakfast table, and he puts the flapjacks or the pancakes on your plate, and they melt in your mouth. And you go, wow, that's the best pancake, that's the best uh, waffle, that's the best flapjack I ever had. And they... And you say, how did you do that? I followed the instructions to a T. Now, here's what we're being told. That's legalism. Oh, really? That's legalism? Yeah, it's legalism to follow. I'm going to be a little bit inventive. 
I just want to change this a little bit. No, no. See, I realize that you might be able to improve on this mix. I understand that. But you cannot improve on God's word. Matter of fact, Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And so if I'm not getting the results that God's word said, then something's wrong with me. Uh, something's missing. Uh, and and, and, and it, it could be, maybe you're following all the instructions, but you don't have faith. There's not faith mixed with it. It says you've got to mix faith with love. Matter of fact, I found about nine things that faith mixes with. It mixes with works, faith and works. Uh, faith in love, faith in joy, faith in peace. How about faith in God's word? <laughs> He sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from the destructions. He said, My son, attend unto my words, incline thy ear unto my ways. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. You know, the Bible says we can be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth our fruit in our due season, but we've got to delight ourselves in the law of the Lord day and night. Delight in the law day and night. Now, I realize we have demonic powers that are out to try to stop us, to hinder us, to interfere with us. But really, we need to be good stewards of the word. You say, oh, I just, I just, can't, I just can't do all that God requires me to do in the New Testament. Now, the, the human body is amazing because the human body, how many, how many of you thank God for your human body? Now, your human body is made up of 270 bones. That's the amount of bones you have in your body. Uh, Honestly, you could live without some of those bones. Uh, you could live out without your legs, but you're, gonna, you're not going to go too far. You could live without your arms, but you're not going to live too much. Uh, it'd be kind of hard to live without your neck. Maybe you could. You could live out some of your bones. But how many know that when bones in your body are missing, your body won't work right? Now, actually, uh, there is approximately 78 major organs in your body. That's what your body is com composed of, about 78 major organs. And, and you know what? Some of these organs you can do away with, like the tonsils. Uh, my wife never had her, hers removed. My kids never did. You know why? Because when I was a little boy, I had my tonsils removed because I had some swelling, some agony. Uh, but I said this in my heart through the years. I said, Lord, I said, if you gave me those tonsils, you must have had a purpose for them. Now they're finding out they had a purpose for the tonsils. Uh, some people get the and those parts of our body we do have to have removed at times because of disease. I understand this. A lot of people have what they call their wisdom teeth removed. I went through years and years of terrible pain with my wisdom teeth coming in. You know, uh, isn't that funny how uh, the wisdom teeth are the most painful part of your body, most likely, unless you're attacked with affliction that comes in. Wisdom is probably, no wonder they call them wisdom, because they're probably one of the hardest things to get is wisdom. Get wisdom. And with, the, with the getting, getting, get understanding, uh, uh, that's what Solomon said, but he didn't get the understanding part. You know? He got a divine download, see? But this book is a divine download from heaven. Now, i tell you why I kept my wisdom teeth, even though it was so painful, was because I knew I was going to need those puppies in my old age. Because I, I, I know I'm not walking in the fullness of the Spirit, and uh, until I got faith for God to replace my rotten teeth, I needed something to chew on. And I'm so glad I kept them, because <laughs> I use those puppies now. When I put something in my mouth, the first place they head is between my wisdom teeth, and that's where I grind it up and I eat it, because if I didn't have my wisdom teeth, my gums just wouldn't do the job. <laughs> so I kept my wisdom teeth because they were a part of my body. Uh, you can live without certain parts of your body, but it's preferable if you keep them all. There's things you can not do with, that's in the book, and you'll be okay. There's certainly, you're not, you're not going to get it all together. You're not going to get the recipe, the principles, exactly right, because that's why it says, if any man says he sins not, he is a liar, and there's no truth in him. Anything that is not faith is sin, but it's not sin that would damn your soul. So there's principles that Mike Yeager uh, would never walk in, realities, because let me tell you something, if I would walk in every principle of the Bible like Jesus did, but that's what I'm aiming for. 
I'm aiming, you know, even when a chef, you know, when a chef, uh, somebody is learning how to become a chef, it takes some time to get it right until where it's just right. Now, I realize that when it comes to uh, the chefs of this world, they're always experimenting, but we don't need to experiment. It's all in this recipe box. Jesus, the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I, I, as a baby Christian, I always said, let's see how Jesus did this. Let's see what Jesus did. But, but I find that what I'm lacking is the application of the truths that Christ taught and the disciples. Uh, one thing, the fruit of the Spirit is very, very important. How many know the fruit of the Spirit is very important? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, patience. Got to have patience, self-control. I'm, I'm a little bit lacking sometimes in the area of self-control. Just a little bit, and it causes me problems. Just a little bit, and it says that if a man has control of his tongue, he's a perfect man and able to control the whole body. So... I've got a little problem with my tongue getting away on me at times. It happened to me today. My tongue got away on me. And uh, sometimes, I, I know I used to have goats and sheep and, and cows. And, uh, and, and Annabelle, our cow, uh, she'd followed the goats. And the goats always got out. And one day I was up here preaching, and here comes a police officer. And said, I'm up here preaching. He comes and said, Reverend, your cow's out on the, your animals are out there on the road again. I think you were probably here for that, Pam. And I said, okay, boys, go wind them. Go, you got you to gotta bring them back in. Well, that's your tongue. Your tongue is slippery. How many know your tongue is slippery? It says it's like a deadly fire. Uh, sets on fire the course of nature. We bless God and we curse man. So the tongue has got to be under control. And how many know death and life isn't a part of the tongue? So a lot of times you'll find your tongue speaking death. And the Bible says you have what you say. And then we blame God. God, I followed the recipe. I did everything your book said. I, I, did, I, I, I crossed every T and dotted every I. And God says, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. So why don't you just admit it and, 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 and repent and, get, and, and strive to enter in at the straight gate. See, I, I, I believe the straight gate, it, it, believe it or not, these, 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 um, res, this recipe on this box are not suggestions. You need so many cups of uh, the Kodiak cake, flapjack, and waffle mix. You need so much milk, a cup of milk. You need to have three quarters of a cup of brown sugar or one egg and uh, one quarter cup of butter. I mean, it's more on there. you you got to do this if you're going to, what they're advertising, if you're going to get this, you got to follow the instructions. And it's got to uh, be cooked at such a temperature for so long on each side. Well, it's the same thing spiritually. If, if I can, say I can, I can get the exact same results of the early church. I can, but I got to follow the recipe. If I don't follow the recipe, I'll have disaster. It'll be a rep. You know what? There are people, I'd rather hang around sinners than many people who call themselves Christians. You know why? Because they're not following the recipe, the principles the laws, the spiritual laws of God, and it makes them monsters. Saul was a monster, destroying the bride, the body of Christ, right? But one day he had an experience with Jesus. He saw Jesus. And when he saw it, how many have ever experienced people who act more like Saul's than Paul's? who named the name of Christ. But he saw Jesus, and all of a sudden when his eyes were open, he surrendered his heart, he humbled himself. If my people, tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer, you know, in America, and if my people are to call by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. What's a wicked way? How you want to do it. 
Jesus taught his disciples, not my will be done, his will be done. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then he begins to teach them the principle of living. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Well, here's the thing. If you don't forgive others their debts, neither will your Father forgive you. Huh? I'm telling you, this is powerful. See, really... We're not trying to reinvent the wheel or discover how to fly or try to create some source of energy. I'm telling you, it's all done. Everything, Jesus on the cross, when he said, it is finished, he handed us his recipe book and said, here it is, people. You, be of good cheer. He said, in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Well, what? Our Strength, our joy, our wisdom, our righteousness, our ability to obey comes from the life of Christ. It is a recipe of amazing, heavenly, delicious, scrumptious, overcoming victory. But most of us have no idea what it is. You know why? Because we're taking the recipe and highlighting what we like and ignoring the rest. Uh, matter of fact, Peter, who had to learn to get the recipe correct because he got it wrong, and even after Christ rose from the dead, remember in Galatians, uh, Paul said that uh, Peter was to be blamed, that there was division in the church because he was sitting with the Gentiles and the Jew, the brethren come down from James and they came in and he, he, he saw them shooting daggers at him through his eyes because they had the recipe all wrong. They didn't believe that this salvation was unto all those who believed. They still thought there was a difference between the Jew and the Greek, between the seed of Abraham and those who believed on Christ, a circumcision of the heart and not the flesh. So he got up and he went away and Barnabas followed him. And it caused major division. Why? It was a recipe of disaster and destruction and death because he did not follow the book. I remember at times I'd get the kids maybe a, a little red wagon for Christmas and uh, I'm so smart I didn't need the instruction book. Uh, how many have ever done something without the instruction book? Come on, maybe men are more guilty of that than women. You know, women go, I need to follow the instructions. I don't need the instructions. And you spend hours trying to put it together and everything's backwards and nothing works. And then all of a sudden, you go, oh, man, uh, this is a mess. And the wife is standing there just kind of tapping her foot, saying, I told you so. And you go back to the book, you tear it all apart, and you put it together, and lo and behold, it works. We've got to go back to the book. When it comes to your marriage, you know why a lot of marriages aren't working? We're not following the instruction book. It took me years and years. You know the story back in 2005. My marriage was done with, man. Kathy had her bags packed. Yeah, we had been through a lot of tragedy. Our little girl had died, lost most of the congregation. But I, I, I tell you what, God woke me up one day. I was in here praying in prayer. He said, son, why don't you just do what I said? What's that, Lord? Just follow the instructions. What? Ephesians. Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. I said, what? Listen, he said, that part, the scripture, it says, wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as, as, as uh, 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 you know, as the church does to Christ. He said, that's not your part. That's not what you're supposed to worry about. He said, you're trying to uh, follow her instructions and remind her. No, just love her. You know what I found out? I always thought that the part of our marriage that wasn't working and my kids would testify, that I really did in my heart of hearts. I thought it's Kathy's fault. And the Lord said, no, it's your fault. Pulled the beam out of your eye. And I chose in my heart over 12 years ago, I'm going to start loving my wife. And then the Lord said, you're not her boss. I said, what? Scripturally, you're not. I'm her husband. I'm her boss. She's her partner together. Said, love her like I loved you. When you were still lost, I loved you. And I began to love her. By God's help, 
and I'm still learning, but I found out it began to make my marriage prosperous. And instead of being miserable, I began to get pleasure in my marriage. Do you know, I'm telling you, I really love being married now. Well, how can that be? Didn't you love it before? Well, a lot of times I just grinned and buried it. I said, oh, I'm just going to. It's like I walked around with constipation 24-7 all those years. I mean, how many have you ever been constipated and hurt it? Come on, man. He goes, oh, and you just can't relieve yourself, right? Uh, and you think, well, you know, and then a lot of people, they think relief is divorce. Yeah, yeah. And out it goes, and here comes another constipation. I'm being honest with you. And, but the truth of the matter is we just haven't done it God's way. There's a way that seems right down to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. There is a way of spiritual growth. There's a way to touch people's lives. There's a way that seems right on to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death, the Bible says. Now, there's so many scriptures, and I, I, I'm almost already out of time, but it's just upon my heart that, hey, I, I like this particular set of scriptures, and you all know that Peter was saying it. I just want to want to read it to you. I don't want to quote it and get it wrong in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Whereby are given unto his exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now listen to what it says here. It says, and beside this, giving all diligence, say diligence. It means you're going to follow the recipe. You're going to follow the law. You're going to follow the principles of the New Covenant, the New Testament. I'm not talking about old covenant laws. I'm talking about, oh, there's commandments in the New Testament. Yeah, Jesus and Matthew, when, when he rose from the dead, and right before he said, he said to his disciples, he said, go and teach all men everywhere to observe all things I have commanded you. And I, uh, I found over 50 things, over 50 things that Christ commanded of his church. And I'm not saying you have to do all of these things to go to heaven, but I'm saying who doesn't want to have a wonderful meal? Right? I, I mean, if I'm going to, I mean, somebody had to buy that flapjack box, right? Full of ingredients. Now, that nothing compared to the price that was paid for my salvation. Why, why don't, I told you the story years ago, I'm sure it's not real, but this guy came down from the mountains, he was a mountain man, and uh, he, he heated his house with firewood, his cabin. And he heard about the new fango dango uh, contraptions called uh, chainsaws, and he went and uh, he had some gold and he traded it for cash and he bought himself a brand new chainsaw at a local uh, chainsaw store. He's so excited, he takes that chainsaw home, about three weeks later, he showed up, and he looked like he was worn to a frazzle. He brings this chainsaw in, throws it down on the counter, and says, this thing is junk. He said, I, I was able to cut more wood with an ax than I ever could with this thing. And, and the guy says, really? He said, that's the top of the line. He said, no, you told me it was the top of the line. You told me I could cut so many cords in a day. And he said, I couldn't even cut a cord in, a, in, in three weeks with that, that, that stupid thing. And God says, well, come on, let's go outside and check it. So he took it outside and, you know, checked the fuel and he checked the oil and checked the tension of the chain and made some adjustments and flipped the switch and pulled the cord. And, went, Rrr! and the guy jumped back and said, what's that? What's that? He had never started the chainsaw. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of the body of Christ. Where's the power? Where's the life? Where's the love? Where's the joy? Where's the peace? How many people say, I give up on the church. They're full of a bunch of hypocrites. There's no power. There's no love. There's no healing. There's no deliverance. I've tried it and tried it and tried it. Oh, have you really? Have you really followed the instructions? He says, having escaped the lust that is in this world because of the promises of God, and give all diligence, add to your faith. You ought to look this up in the Amplified. I don't have time tonight, but virtue. Faith 
and virtue. To virtue, knowledge. Uh, study to show yourself approved out of God. Work myth, may it not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, that's for the preacher. It's for every believer. That's why we have Bibles. To knowledge, temperance, self-control. How many know that you need to have faith, virtue, knowledge to have self-control? Did you hear that? You've got to have faith, virtue, and knowledge to have self-control. To self-control, patience or endurance. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. That means there's, a, there's a, a, a time period like when a woman gets pregnant to the moment of birth. There's nine months there. I've discovered that with healing. I, I speak healing over my body and just because I don't see it manifested in a day, in a week, sometimes three months, I don't give up. I don't let go. And guess what? One day it comes. Boom. The manifestation comes. I go, whoo, there it is. That's what I've been looking for, but I already knew in my heart it was done. And to, self and to patience, godliness. What do you mean? Living, talking, thinking, acting like God. And that's why we got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He was the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. He said, if you saw me, you saw the Father. The works I do are not in my mind, but the Father's. The, the words that speak are not mine, but my Father's. It's my Father and I. And now it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in us. And the godliness, brotherly kindness. You've got to be kind. Be gentle to those, the Bible says, that oppose themselves. Kindness. I find that is missing so much from my life at times. I'm not kind. And my kids will say to me, Dad, you're not being very kind right now. I said, no, I just always talk loud. That's just my personality. Isn't that something? <laughs> just not kind. Not gentle, not sweet. Huh? <laughs> For if these things, listen, and it says brotherly kindness, love, charity, agape, uh, you know, unconditional love. I love you <laughs> no matter what. That doesn't mean I approve. That doesn't mean you're justified. I just, I'm going to love you. You slap me in the cheek, I'll turn the cheek. Uh, now, that doesn't mean I'm going to let you slap the other side, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to rebel against you. I'm not going to, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Huh? For if, say if, if these things be in you and abound, they're growing, these things are abounding, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you know you can be unfruitful in the knowledge you have of Jesus Christ? That's terrible. That's like a fig tree with no fruit unfruitful, no evidence of Jesus. Uh, when I talk about fruit, I'm not talking about if, how big a house you live in or how nice a car you drive or how fancy your clothes are. I'm talking about the divine character of God. That when he was rebuked, he rebuked not. When he was attacked, he attacked not. When he said, Father, forgive them on the cross for they know not what they do. Huh? Isn't that good? But he, listen, but he that lacketh these things, is blind, cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Forgotten what God has forgiven him of. Um, not thankful, not joyful, uh, not cheerful. See, the, 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 this recipe, this is wonderful. I'll, I'll get my flapjacks and my waffles if I follow the instructions according to those who made it and produced it. I mean, they just didn't throw something together and say, we hope this works and somebody will buy this product. No, I, I, I think this is a company that goes way, way back. At least the box makes it look that way. Well, come on. You want to see another box of ingredients that are guaranteed to work right here? The Holy Bible. Now, let me, let me just get real quick, and there are scriptures for every one of these things. And I'll just read these things real quick because there's actually 50 of them. If these things got to be in your life. And th these, are, these are commandments. He said, keep my commandments. And um, he, he said this. He said, repent. You got to have repentance. Follow me. You want to succeed? Follow Christ. Rejoice. 
Rejoice in the Lord evermore. Again, I say rejoice, rejoice, even when you don't feel like it, when it don't look. See, understand, these, these things are important. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Right? That's what it says. Honor God's law. Matter of fact, it says that uh, obey the laws of the land. He says that we should be reconciled with people. It says, if at all possible, live at harmony among yourselves. Uh, do not lust. Uh, you know, uh, the lust of the eyes, the lusting after the opposite sex, lusting after things, the materialism of this world. This, these, are, these are a part of the recipe book, you might say, or the recipe box. Uh, keep your word. You make a commitment, keep it. I tell people, I used to have pat, uh, these TV preachers would try to get me to make commitments. I'd go to church meetings, and they're trying to get everybody to make a commitment, and I want to make a commitment. This is not that I don't commit myself to God, but some of that is, I think, witchcraft. They get people to commit to a certain amount of money every month. And when I say commit, I mean you're going to sign a pledge. You're going to keep a vow. Matter of fact, uh, wait, I'm not picking on him. He's come and gone. I knew Bob Tilton. And I'm not picking on Bob. But I went down to Texas, and I was with them, and everything was going fine. And we're going to build this big, beautiful uplink, like we got an uplink system out here, almost the exact. He was going to build a network. Next thing you know, the network's up and running. He's going to use it. Next thing you know, Bob is using it all for him, success and prosperity or something, success in life. And it's all about Bob. And I had made a commitment at a, 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 as a church for, like, I think $100 a month. I stopped making the payment. One day I got a phone call from one of his te te tele telephoners, and, uh, Mr. Yeager, you made a commitment to Bob Tilton for $100 a month. Uh, and you're not keeping your commitment. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I said, I'll keep my commitment when he keeps his commitment. Well, he got flooded. What do you mean? I said, he said this Success in Life Network was to spread the gospel by all the ministers. I said, have you noticed it's all about him now? I'm not picking on a guy, okay? I'm not picking on him. I'm just telling you the truth. And the guy got frustrated. I said, when he keeps his commitment, I said, I'll keep mine. I hung up the phone and never called me back again. <laughs> so if you're going to make a commitment, you know, by God's grace, you, you, marriage is a commitment. We said, I'll love you in the good times and the bad times. The death does us part. That's just one thing. Uh, I've had a lot of parents said they were going to raise their children in the way they should go. Brought them up, had me bless them. Did they? You know what? God help us, say God, thank God for his mercy. I'm just saying we're not getting the results that the Bible promises because I'm not getting the results, me, that God promises because I'm not keeping all that God has made available to me. So we'll finish here in just a minute. Listen to this. Go the second mile. Remember he says, in the old days the Romans would make you carry their stuff for one mile, and he said, carry it for two miles. Wait, for other words, just go the extra mile. Say, go the extra mile. It says, love your enemies and do good to them that despitefully use you. You want to be blessed? Love your enemies and do good to them. The Bible says, given it shall be given on you, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. So how many Christians do good to your enemies and bless them? <laughs> no wonder we're not getting the God kind of life. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, I don't know if you're getting something out of this message, but this is for me. <laughs> I, I, need, I, I want what God says I can have. But I got to do what God says to do, right? I mean, if God says go north, but I had south, I'm not going to get what God said I could have. Uh, it says uh, be perfect even as your Father in heaven. That perfect there mean, doesn't mean you've arrived. It means have that attitude, the attitude of God. Uh, you know, uh, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Uh, practice secret disciplines. What's Okay, uh, the Bible says when you pray, pray in secret. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have unified prayer, but it means get alone. It says uh, when you give financially, don't let anybody know you're giving financially and how much you gave. That's what it says. He says, and if you keep it secret, your reward in heaven will be abundant. <laughs> There's things that we're supposed to do in secret. Uh, not evil things, good things, right? 
Uh, it says here, listen, this, we're talking about the principle, lay up yourself a treasure in heaven. Raise up yourself a treasure in heaven. So I, the other day, you know, I had somebody who was attacking me basically saying, oh, you're probably like all the other TV preachers uh, living in your fancy big house. So I went outside, took a picture of my house. Some of you have seen it on Facebook. And actually on one post I put, uh, 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 I says, a millionaire that lives in a dump. Because <laughs> actually I'm a billionaire. I mean, I'm a trillionaire. And, uh, and, and, and I, I, I have decided, you know, yeah, I, I need to take care of what God gives me, but but you know what? I want to lay up treasures in heaven. How am you laying up treasures in heaven? And the older I get, the more I discover the less stuff I need. How many want to get rid of a bunch of stuff? Just do me a favor with your stuff. Don't bring it to me. <laughs> I don't want your stuff, okay? Okay, listen. Seek first God's kingdom. That's what it says. Uh, here's the other thing. Judge not, lest you be judged. Now, judge not means that it doesn't mean we're rightly discerning by their fruit, but it means that we're not taking vengeance on them. It's not our job to get rid of them or to punish them. That's God's job. We pray for them, right? Uh, the Bible says don't cast your pearls before swine. What does that mean? That means not everybody is somebody you can help. You got to hear from God. Now, you don't call them a pig. <laughs> you just say, you know what? I, God, I, I, I had to discover as a pastor it was killing me, man. I, I, I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. You know what I mean by that? I, I can't help everybody. Uh, I had somebody the other day. He, uh, I mean, I couldn't help him. Somebody who's come to this church very, very, very seldom ha has a lot. They have a lot of issues and a lot of problems. And real late at night, they, they wanted me to come to the rescue. I didn't even respond. I know I'm not their answer. I'm not the healer. I'm not the healer. I, I'm just a man. I, I got to know, I, I got to know where I belong and where I don't belong. And I, I can't, listen, if you run after everybody that has a terrible situation, you're not going to have no marriage. You're not going to have no life. You got to hear from God. Do you know Jesus, a lot of times, he walked past everybody in the pool of Bethesda. He walked over the top of lame, blind, sick, diseased people. He stepped over them to get to one man. People don't understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Why did he do that? He, he was love and action. He stepped over all of these multitudes of people to get to one man and told him, take up your cot and go home. Well, why did he do that? Because the father didn't tell him to help those people. I've actually told, I've heard the Lord say to me, you can't help them, let them go. Has that ever happened to you? I mean, you know, if, if I'm going to get what Christ has for me, I'm going to have to do it his way. So uh, he, he says, uh, ask, seek, knock. Right? Do unto others as he'd have them do unto you. Walk the straight and narrow way. He says, beware of false prophets. How many know that people are all messed up because they're not bewaring of false prophets and their wolves and sheep's clothing? I'm actually thinking about doing a book called uh, Wolves and Sheep's Clothing, and I will give illustration after illustration of times I have been involved with wolves. <laughs> Why? Beware of wolves. That's what he says. Isn't that what he says? Uh, it says, Pray for laborers in the harvest field. He said, be wise as serpent, as harmless as doves. He said, fear not what man can do unto you. Now, uh, uh, hear God's voice. You're my sheep, uh, my sheep. Hear my voice. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm meek and lonely in heart. He says, honor your parents. If a man does not provide for his own, he's worse than an infidel. So Kathy's right now uh, is up with her mother. And she called me up a little while ago and said, Honey, I want to do such and such for Mom. It's going to cost uh, us almost $30 a month. My flesh kind of rose up, and, and my flesh thinking, Well, where's the, her kids, you know? And where's the other kids, you know? We're, we're doing stuff for Mom all the time. And I, I said to her, I said, Yes. And she kept on going. And I said, Baby, didn't you hear me? I said, Yes, do it. $30 a month, we'll do it. Well, this month is going to be $60. $60. What? It's going to be $60. I said, Okay, here's my credit card. Number. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not a credit card, it's a debit card. So honor your parents, take care of your parents, right? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Deny yourself, 
Take up your cross and follow him. Despise not the little ones. Let them come on to the house of the Lord. Go to those who have, you, you have offended and ask them to forgive you. If you really have done somebody dirt. Now, there's a lot of people who imagine things you've done to them, but you never did it to them. But those you know you have misused. Beware of covetousness. Well, I wonder how many preachers preach that. Beware. You don't need a big house. You don't need fancy cars. You don't need expensive clothes. Oh, no, no, it's all okay. But Jesus says, beware of covetousness, for a man's life is not consisting in what he wears or what he eats. And these are all a part of uh, having a recipe of prosperity and abundance and victory. Uh, forgive those who have offended you. Forgive and will be forgiven. Honor marriage. Er marriage is honorable. Uh, be a servant. Have a servant's house. Be a house of prayer. You've turned my house into a den of thieves, he said. Ask in faith. Bring, uh, bring in the poor. Take care of the blind, the lame, the hot. Can you see what's involved in this? It's way more than pray a prayer. Right? Believe on Jesus. Now we're all happy and go lucky. We're all going to heaven. Can't wait. No. He says, do what? Bring in the poor. When I was blind, when I was naked, when I was sick, well, I'll render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Love the Lord with all of your heart. Love your neighbors yourself. He said, be waiting for my return. Live every day as if he's coming back. Uh, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Uh, you must be born again. Keep my commandments. Watch and pray. Feed my sheep. Baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Be endued with power from on high. Make disciples. Abide in my word, and my word abides in you. Oh, there's so much more. <laughs> I threw it all together kind of tonight, mixed it all up, but it ain't ready to be cooked yet. Recipe of dis disaster is you highlight what you like, and that's it. And you got a mess, an utter, complete mess in your home, in your body, in your finances, in your marriage, in our church, in our government. Why? Because we pick and choose. And it's not God. He's the father of lights, in whom there's no verb and it's not a shadow turning. You've got to do it God's way. Say, I've got to do it God's way. Amen.